Lately, I've found myself frozen and unmotivated to put together a decent fit, and when I do need to get dressed, I'm just cycling through the same few options that require minimal brain power on my end. There's nothing wrong with sticking within your comfort zone, especially if you're going through a bit of a rough patch. The issue for me is I start scrolling. When I start scrolling, I start comparing myself. Why do my outfits never turn out as good as theirs? How do they manage such a perfectly crafted outfit while still looking effortless? Ugh, I wish I had their wardrobe. This then often leads to a few full shopping carts that you swear will fix all of your problems, but from personal experience, trust me, it won't. So before you go on a quest to find the perfect item, may I suggest simply playing dress ups. It's easy to convince yourself that your wardrobe isn't up to scratch when you're directly comparing it to things that you don't have. But if you're able to switch that mindset and just enjoy playing around with what you do own, you might be surprised with what you can come up with. I know that can be easier said than done, but that's why we're here to hold each other's hand through the entire process, go step by step, how I'm layering and restyling my clothes to bring new life to my outfits. A cardigan and pleated skirt is an absolute classic. If I threw on some shoes, grabbed a bag, I'd be good to go as is, but I wanted to see if we could make it a little bit more interesting. I decided to start out with a baby pink button up to match the beautiful bow detail on the cardigan. And I was kind of trying to follow the sandwich method by going with the black tights and then the pink shoes, but I felt like they were just too bulky. It was giving like clown energy. So I switched them out for the Mary Janes instead. The midsection felt like a lot of blank space to me. So I added a belt to break that up. And then for the rest of the the accessories I opted for cutesy just to keep that charm and I really love how it turned out overall it almost has like a deconstructed preppy feel to it and just in case an extra layer is necessary I thought that this oversized blazer was a good option I actually really like the inclusion of gray in this look it almost softens the stark contrast of the baby pink and black I recently got this hoodie that I've been dying to style, but it is way too hot to actually wear it out here. So today is the perfect opportunity. And this outfit is giving Katie 101. I mean, come on, teaming it with a little plaid skirt, I'm gonna reach for that option every time, which is why I needed to challenge myself and switch it up. I went for this flowy lace skirt, obviously changes the silhouette, but also brings a new vibe to the equation because it's slightly more unexpected with a dressier feel to it. And because I just love the pattern clash of stripes and plaid, I had to reintroduce it in the form of this blazer. Once again, I just felt like it needed a bridging piece, but instead of going for a belt, I actually took this open knit halter top and wore it upside down with the straps dangling, which almost gave the effect of a garter belt. I think it just adds a bit more interest, especially with the texture. Plus, it's a good reminder that you can actually get more out of your clothes if you start wearing them the wrong way. And because my brain just craves that cohesion, I went for striped socks and a red bag just to tie everything together. The off-the-shoulder sweater has been insanely popular the last couple of seasons, and while I'd happily wear it with just this same skirt, it's actually a great candidate for layering, so let's try and style it three different ways. Honestly, I'm going to start with a straight copy and paste. I've been seeing so many variations of this on my feed. I swear it looks good on everyone, and now that I've tried it for myself, I can confirm I'm in love. The colors are just working so well together and I'm very grateful that I had the perfect tie option, but truly I feel like it's the glasses that brings it all together. In my mind, the original reference is Devil Wears Prada and I'm excited to play around more with this concept and try and do something closer to the source. It's just such an easy combo that doesn't feel too overwhelming. Jeans and a sweater is a go-to comfort outfit for me, and it is such an easy one to level up. I think I've liked every picture in existence to feature a lace skirt over baggy jeans. It is an addiction at this point, but it just works. I would love to get a white one that is more of a wrap tie-up situation, but for now I'm just making do with this thrifted option that still has the lining attached. Thankfully, the texture of the skirt really helps break up the color blocking that's happening, but to further that, I've also layered some long necklaces. Because of the necklaces I chose, I decided to stick with black accessories to balance everything out. And for me, that helps it make it feel more wearable, especially on days that I'm not feeling my most confident. It helps tone down my sometimes cartoonish style when I don't feel like being perceived. In contrast to that, if you're not looking to lay low and you want an instant confidence boost, in my humble opinion, pink and camo is the it girl combo. There's just something about it that is able to convince me that I am indeed a cool girl. And let me tell you, that is not something that comes out of my mouth very often. Oh, and adding in a touch of red as well. Like I can't explain it. You just have to try it. But let me know which one you gravitate towards the most out of the three of them. 
Another super simple base to start out, just jeans and a long sleeve. And even though the top has this pattern to it, I really like that it kind of blends in with the tone of the jeans. To brighten that up though, I'm using my favorite layering piece, this baby pink knit vest top that was on my wish list for probably almost a year before I finally caved and purchased it. So far, no regrets. I wanted to add a little bit more dimension, but nothing too crazy. So I thought the perfect option would be going for a double denim moment and layering this skirt over the jeans. Since both the color and texture are the same, it's nothing too distracting. To complement both the baby pink and the more muted tones going on, I decided to go for some blush accessories. The D'Andre boots are such a throwback. They're from the same era as the Jeffrey Campbell leaders. And actually same with this flower belt. I think I've had it since I was like 13. <laughs> And this is one of those cases where I feel like going for a more fun hairstyle really made the look in the end. And if you're ever wondering where I get my inspo, literally just shoujo manga. Playing around with proportions can be an absolute game changer to your outfits. For example, here I have a really small base, short shorts and a boob tube. So to balance it out, I'm going for a maxi length coat. And to play around with even more variations of length, I've paired it up with a knee high boot. For me, left as is, it feels a bit too disconnected, so I decided to go back and add a layer underneath with this leopard cardigan, which I think brings in the color of the faux fur trim. Also, positioning the belt low rise, I think, brings us back to the importance of proportions. This is definitely one of those ones that I've previously just admired on other people, so I've pleasantly surprised myself here. And again with the proportions, because I do kind of have a long torso in comparison to my leg length, so this long line top isn't really doing me any favors. But the simple fix for me here is just to add on a cropped layer. And I don't know, there's just something about the preppy, almost business casual nature of this that makes me feel like I belong in a 2010s teen TV show. Like, could I or could I not make a cameo in Pretty Little Liars in this outfit? Oh yeah, I also tried to take it in a different direction with the leopard coat, but... I wasn't loving it. Another helpful thing to create balance in your outfits is juxtaposition. And I feel like this is kind of overused at this point, but as someone who grew up on Close Encounters videos, this is ingrained in my soul. For example, in this look, rather than being sporty from head to toe, I switched out a few of the items for something a little bit more soft and sweet. Taking two clashing aesthetics like this and mixing it into one can help make the outfit more interesting and also in this case, help dress up something that is very casual without compromising on comfort. Don't get me wrong though, because that doesn't mean you can't have a good look if you go all in on one specific style. I love doing that, especially when it comes to these ultra girly, almost like early 2000s shoujo girl inspo. And this is actually made up of so many of my staple items when it comes to layering a good fit. If you're into this sort of style, I feel like lacy items for layering are gonna be your best friend. It's honestly a challenge for me at this point to not put this scarf on with just about every outfit. And speaking of versatile pieces, I always keep an eye out for items that can button all the way down because instantly it opens up your styling options. Okay, spoiler alert, this one's gonna get a bit dicey. I started out with the same base, but this time around I wanted the lace shirt to be the outer layer. And I thought it could be cool if on the bottom we switched the order that the colors were layered in. So I went for this poncho, but wore it as like a sheer skirt. Obviously at this point we need to accessorize, but this is where it took a turn for the worse because as I kept layering them on, it just read more and more pirate. There is absolutely no defending that. Even though I'm not loving it, it's just a bit too costumey for me to feel comfortable wearing it out and about, I still wanted to include it because trial and error is such an important part of this creative process. If you're just sitting there scrolling and imagining outfits in your mind, you'll never really know if it's gonna work out because honestly, sometimes I think I have the best idea and then we end up with this. But you know what? There is a very high possibility that Pirate Core is a huge hit this year. And if not, I can probably sneak on set of a film crew. Since I was apparently taking things too far, we're gonna take a step back and look for some more summer appropriate outfits. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a summer auntie. It takes away my ability to layer, so I'm always feeling like my outfits are undercooked. And I'm sorry to report that I caved to peer pressure and bought a pair of jorts. I felt like I was missing out on the summer experience. For tops, I couldn't help myself and still layered too, but both are really lightweight with a mesh and an open knit. And the orange top actually comes with matching sleeves. Obviously gonna skip them when it's too hot, so I decided to tie it on my belt loop and add a little charm just to bring more color into the outfit. For sun safety, I cap 
cap just felt correct, unlike the footwear choice, which the boots are definitely questionable. In my defense, I do genuinely wear these all throughout summer because they're more of a looser fit. It just feels hot weather friendly. As much as I like how the fit turned out, it's not necessarily my typical vibe. So something more within my comfort zone would be styling a cutesy summer dress. It's a very pretty dress to begin with. I love the colors, so I didn't want to distract from that. But if I left it as just wearing one singular piece, I knew I would feel naked. I kept it simple with probably one of my most worn pieces this time of year, a little cap sleeve white bolero. And again, kind of going back to that sandwich method when it came to accessories, I went for black in the shoes, belt, and the jewelry. However, I thought it would be fun to switch it up with the bag and go with the pink to bring out the flowers from the dress. This one's super cute and super easy. Let me know if you are looking for more summer appropriate outfits because I could do like a outfits of the week, what I'm actually wearing sort of thing. This dress really should have gone in my styling clothes I never ever wear video because it was probably last spotted in 2018. But like always, I was scrolling my favorite vintage account on Xiao Hongshu wishing that my outfits looked like this. And I was like, okay, realistically, what do I own that is gonna give us this sort of vibe? Obviously this dress is what I came up with and I knew I wanted to pair it with a vintage nightgown. Originally I was thinking maybe with cowboy boots but ended up not loving that. So I took it in a different direction and layered a long flowy white skirt underneath. I brought back the D'Andre boots again and matched the blush tone perfectly with this beret. Other than that, I just added my trusty scarf and one necklace. Because the print is so busy on its own, I really didn't feel the need to over-accessorize this time, but I love how it turned out. And you know what? Whoever styles those mannequins, I think would definitely consider this outfit as an option. Other than these sort of whimsy looks, they also have some more playful outfits as well, and I figured that this dress would act as a great base for that too. I switched out the nightgown for this loose sleeveless hoodie and originally I thought it would pair it all over jeans but it just felt a little bit too baggy so I ditched it for these knee-high socks and the most adorable Mary Janes you've ever seen. So to continue with that theme I opted for some more fun and vibrant accessories like this multicolor striped scarf, the denim bandana and a few character goods as well including this vintage lunchbox that usually just sits in the background of my videos. Probably not going to be for everyone personally I think it looks like a more summery fruits magazine inspired look but perhaps you think it looks like a preschooler chose my outfit. Okay, so I'm not a big fan of a bodycon dress on me, so pretty much let's just layer this until it's unrecognizable. Starting with some loose fit jeans and a dark wash, I like this, but it's not adding enough shape around the hips for me. It still feels very bodycon, so I wanted to layer a skirt over the top. Typically, this is just like your wraparound kilt adjacent skirt, but I felt like it just wasn't working. So I decided to play around a bit with the shape, pin it in the back, and that way it left this opening in the front, which allows us to see the layers underneath. And I don't know, I feel like you just don't lose your legs as much now. It was feeling a bit dark, so I thought it was the perfect opportunity to introduce another pattern. I decided to go with leopard because I love this combo. I also like that this creates another variation in length, but I realized that we were kind of losing the white Line, so I decided to re-emphasize it by adding a chunkier belt. And in a way, it kind of reminds me of Chipova Luena, which I love. I've been lusting over one of their skirts for years and years. For accessories, I knew I wanted to wear this red and black tie, but if I did it up properly, it was going to cover the bow. So I threw it on like more of a skinny scarf. An all black shoe probably would have elongated the leg more, but I don't know. I just wanted to bring in that neutral color from the coat somewhere. And then also wanted to add some more red to make the plaid pop a little bit more, which I did through the hat and bag. I think it turned out great. I feel like I could belong in the Nana universe, which you guys know is always my ultimate goal when getting dressed. I wear this t-shirt at least twice a week. Typically I pair it with something a little bit more neutral, so I wanted to switch it up today. I love how this shade of yellow teams with blue. Obviously the designer does too because it's already built into the graphic, which makes it so easy. I went with this little chul tutu skirt, which instantly made me want to reach for my all-time favorite accessory, this beanie scarf combo. I will admit it makes the outfit somewhat weather challenged, like what season are we wearing this in? But I decided just to roll with it, put these leg warmers on. It didn't feel like just enough, which is a reminder that layering isn't just for your clothes but your accessories as well. I threw on these stockings underneath which I think instantly made the look so much better. I like that the denim bag brings a darker blue into the mix and please notice my Skate the Infinity pins. I thought it was perfect for like the warm and cool tones. 
This shirt is one of my most precious items in my wardrobe. I got it my first trip to Japan from a small local designer. It gets a lot of wear in my wardrobe as is, but I wanted to try styling it as a skirt today. I see this on TikTok all the time, but whenever I've tried it in the past, I just don't know what to team with it. I figured it'd be easiest to stick with the black base on top. That way I know my accessories will be sorted, but I did layer on this beige corset. It helps blend with the warm tones in the skirt. Plus, since I only tied it up halfway, it adds more to that deconstructed feel. The black boots kind of elevated it a little bit, so I thought it'd be fun to counteract that with a really casual outerwear piece, but this hoodie just was not working. So instead of fighting it, I played along with a more dressed up feel, opting for this slim fit utilitarian jacket. Doing up the top button only created a really nice shape and allowed the layers to shine through. This is definitely something different for me. I don't think I ever would have come up with this unless I gave myself this designated dress up time to just experiment freely. A sweatshirt and jeans is the lazy girl staple, but it's actually really easy to dress up to. I'm actually surprised more vests haven't popped up in this video because they are such a great option when it comes to layering. I love the color of this one. I think it works well with the graphic and also the texture just keeps things casual. You probably realize by now that I have an obsession with skirts over pants, so I'm taking that same one that I've styled multiple times already. Felt a little bit frumpy here though, so I hiked it up, tucked it under my bra, and now it's more of a mini length. And since it's a similar color to the sweatshirt, it almost just feels like an extension to it now. For accessories, I stuck with things that to me still have that cozy texture, again, just to keep it casual. I was trying to think of layering options that I hadn't already tried, which was when it hit me, a dress over a dress. This ended up being one of the easiest ones because it really didn't require much effort. I think especially if your starting dress is one that has a collar and a puff sleeve. Of course, it also helps that the other dress already has the most adorable print on it. So I didn't feel like I needed to be too heavy handed with the accessories. However, I thought that the striped scarf was a nice touch. This is definitely the sort of look I'd be happy with if I was a cartoon character and had to wear it every single day. I just think it's so cute. Those were all the outfits I came up with today, and honestly, I can't remember the last video where I liked the outfits this much. Let me know which ones were your favorite, and I hope you got some inspo on how to layer your own wardrobe as well. Thanks so much for your patience with me. I know it took me a while to get this one out, but like I said, I've just been in a bit of a style rut. I'm starting to have a lot more ideas though, so hopefully I will be seeing you again very, very soon. Bye!